Yo, 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 it's Maxilla, and I'm here with a serious video today. I'm going to be discussing what I feel is wrong and right about 2K20, as well as what I want to be going on in 2K21. 2K21 is right around the corner. It's around less than two months away from being released on PS4. And I just think the current state of 2K with 2K20's status right now is just not very good right now. And uh, in this background, there's not going to be any audio. It's going to be me talking. But in the background, you'll see why yeah, why I'm just so upset with this game right now. Like, I go against the team. They're tryhards, but they're really not that good. Like, you know how most tryhards are. They just hide behind screens, shoot, get bailed out by whites every once in a while. But, yeah, you know, same stuff, same business. My team is decent, like we were 8 positive at the time of this video, I think we're around 6 or 7 positive now. Uh, we just play a lot of games, we just play 3v3 because it's literally the only game mode that's fun in this entire game, the game has just gotten stale and boring at this point. But, you see I am being guarded by a shooting guard, a 2 way 3 point facilitator, meaning he's one of those shooting lockdowns that everyone makes, and in this game it's just crazy like he gets crazy contests he gets like overrated defensive attributes look at this wide open I do a layup and I miss right off the bat but that's one of the things that's the number one thing I hate about 2k20 um, if you're a big man and you're going against a guard it's a lot easier to stop the big man as a guard than it is to stop a guard as a big man uh, I main a paint beast that's my number one build that I have I won the 1v1 event the uh, rush event I won the 2v2 event with my paint beast and countless amount of times I'll go against a shooting guard to a finisher or a shooting guard rebounding guard or a small forward rebounding wing and my paint beast is 6 foot 11 and the guard will be like 6 5 6 6 and he'll get heavy contests on my big man because of intimidator but because I am a big man and the guard is smaller than me he has giant slayer which cancels out my Hall of Fame intimidator which is the same badge that he uses to stop my uh, layups and dunk attempts and I just don't think that's realistic at all like for example Prime Shaq was to back down Gary Payton Gary Payton would not be able to stop Shaq could not maybe every once in a while but consistently like I'm being stopped in this game it's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Like, you could stop bigs in this game. It's gotten to the point where I created a 6-7 shooting guard to a finisher to guard big man. And I do a job better than my paint beast does. And it's it's kind of sad and stupid and unrealistic and just ruins the fun of the game. And I know people are going to come in here and be like, Oh, but they had to do something to stop bigs from being able to do whatever they wanted. Well, that's the point of having another big on the team. You shouldn't be able to run three guards and stop a team with a center on it. It's just not realistic. If Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and freaking J.R. Smith or something came into the court against, like, freaking Kemba Walker, John Wall, and then Andre Drummond, Andre Drummond would be able to eat in the paint. He's just simple as that. He shouldn't be getting out-rebounded. And he shouldn't be getting stopped in the paint on a consistent level. The only way a guard should be able to stop a big is by maybe stripping the ball out of his hands when he's going up for a post move or getting a steal on him because he can't dribble. But if I'm getting contested and they're kicking me out of dunk animations as a center and I have 99 standing dunk, contact dunks, Hall of Fame contact finisher, and all he has is Hall of Fame intimidator, it's just... Badges being too prevalent in the game and height not mattering. In real life, height matters more than anything else in the NBA. Although there are teams running small ball to shoot, but not for defensive purposes. But that's the biggest issue I have with this game. Another big issue is the amount of intercept steals you're able to get in this game is ridiculous. There's been the amount of times where even myself... I'll be facing towards the basket and I'll get a steal with the back of my hand and that's just not realistic like that happens like on very rare occasions in the NBA you don't just 
smack your hand out and catch a ball one-handed while not even looking at it and just get a steal. Pass it to your teammates and they're all the way down the court for a free dunk. It's so stupid. Inbound steals, I can understand you're playing the lane to get the steal on the inbound, but you should have just be able to steal every single pass, especially if there's like a pure playmaker passing the ball and you have needle threader, they have 95 pass accuracy, and you're a dude with like a 70 steal with just gold interceptor or Hall of Fame interceptor just stealing everything. It's stupid. Another is just Intimidator itself really needs to die, but I already made that apparent. But another one is when a big man goes to get a rebound and then they spam square while the guy's landing and then he loses the ball and gets a turnover and then they get another possession because they didn't box out correctly the dude gets the rebound they get angry they spam square to steal the ball and they get a steal it should be a foul every single time the dude's in midair that's you're putting someone at risk which is an automatic foul in the NBA you can't do stuff like that I could see every once in a while getting away with like getting a clean strip but it literally happens to me three four or five times in a rec game, I'll have them strip the ball out of my hands and get a turnover because of it. It's just stupid. And I have unpluckable on my big, so there's, it's not like, oh, put the unpluckable on it or fix. And another big problem is people being able to steal the ball from people with high ball controls where when they have a low steal rating. I can't tell you the amount of times I use my slashing playmaker with 95 ball control and Hall of Fame unpluggable, and I'm getting robbed by an offensive threat with like a 63 or a 60 steal rating or a 70 steal rating, and it's it's stupid. But I have a perimeter lockdown small forward with an 85 steal Hall of Fame pickpocket, and I get reaching fouls every time I go for a steal. It's it's dumb. And another thing is, if you're going up for a contact dunk. You're going up for the dunk animation. You're already through it. And then a defender comes in very last second. And then your dunk animation somehow gets switched to a layup animation. That doesn't happen in real life. In real life, you'd go up for the dunk. You'd either make the dunk or you'd miss it. But you're still going up for the dunk animation. You don't just switch to a layup unless you choose to. And I'm not... Most of the time, 9 times out of 10, people are not trying to switch animations. They're trying to go up for their dunk. You know, they spent that VC to get all the contact dunks. They grinded their player out to be able to have contact dunks. And they grinded contact finisher just for a late defender to be able to come from the three-point line up into the paint and keep you from getting your dunk animation. It's another horrible, stupid thing in this game. Another terrible thing is when big men that are seven foot three can just do post hooks and get 100% covered or contested freaking hook shots just to drop right in consistently and it's not even every once in a while I've had that happen three four or five times in one game and then you got all these people that swear their competition they're high level players running a lockdown point guard so you can get hella rebounds and a seven foot three post score that just does post hooks and drop step all game and it just ruins the fun the, this game is not fun to play it's not Unless you're playing 3v3 Pro-Am, but if you're playing twos on the park, it's not fun. You're going to run into someone that hides behind screens and just shoots over and over again. Or you're going to run into a double lineup of a lockdown and a freaking post gore backing you down doing contested post hooks all game. The paint defense is broken in every way imaginable in this game. On one spectrum, guards can do whatever they want against the big man. And on the other spectrum, if you're seven foot three, there's nothing anyone can do to contest anything. Because even if they do, it just goes in. It's just stupid. And you've seen in this video, my, me being a playmaking four, six foot nine, going against this two-way, three-level facilitator. I have inside positioning, almost every attempt I make, and he gets a stop on me. And they'll say something like sixty-seven percent, fifty percent, and then my. My friend who goes up for a layup with two people in his face gets a 12% contest because he's a guard and he has Giant Slayer or has Slithery Finisher or some other finishing badge. I'm a big man. I can't put that badge on because it doesn't do anything. But since he's a guard and they're running multiple guard lockdowns, they can do whatever they please. 
They're shooting. I showed you he hit a 20% contested green. I have gold intimidator. There's nothing I can do about that. He's blocking me from behind when I have four feet of space in front of him in an easy lane. There's nothing I can do about that. That's the game. And he hits... The amount of whites that go in in this game is stupid. When the game first came out, you couldn't make a shot unless it was green. Well, after the first patch. Because the first, when the game first came out, you could make red releases and it was terrible. But when the first patch came out, you didn't make shots unless it was green. Whites didn't go in. And then people were complaining because, for whatever reason, it takes away from casual players. Which, I don't care. Casual players shouldn't run a community. It should be people that play this game. Seriously. But... Yeah, so then they made it where whites go in, and now whites go in too consistently. Well, except for me, I never make a white. I know, so there's got to be some of y'all that never get to make whites. And you go against teams where they make four, five, six whites in one game, and then you lose because of that. And that's not fair. You're not losing to skill, you're losing to pure RNG, numbers-based, randomized BS. And it's just, it's not fair. For a player that puts in time, effort, money, grinds out badges, just to lose to someone that gets to hit random numbers based freaking lucky shots on you. And you have to sit there, wait, time your shot correctly in green or you don't get to make it. It's not fair. Layups, I don't think have to be green because they're layups. But jump shots, they should be green for the most part. And shot closes are annoying as heck in this game. They'll hide behind the screen, run right to the freaking free throw area and shoot up and it goes in every time just because there's a shot close it's not fair it takes no skill this game is the least skillful 2k I've ever played in my life and 2k19 allowed everyone to make every white it's just I hate this game you got people with 49 three-point ratings shooting from half court because they're a legend and making threes and then you got a sharp shooter that grinds his ass off to get every shooting badge Hall of Fame shoots a wide open corner shot and he'll miss it doesn't make sense. If you're going to let whites go in, I would figure the whites would go in for higher rated players than it would for lower player raters. But it's it's just the exact opposite. And it's stupid. All these badges mean more than actual attributes. There's no way a 95 three-point shot with no freaking range extender or nothing like that should make less threes than a freaking 50 rated two-way finisher that has hot zone hunter on gold and range extender on gold it's stupid it's just not right I I play with a two-way stretch and an offensive threat as my teammates and they both have 80 plus three-point shots and the amount of whites we miss is beyond ridiculous we'll go against nothing but two-way slashers two-way finishers slashers and they make whites from half court. We literally lost the game because the dude had nine points of half court whites that got green animations, meaning they're automatic buckets. It's stupid. And I just wanted to make this video to see if anyone else in the 2K c community agrees with how I feel about the status of the 2K as a whole right now. Everyone just wants to dribble glitch. Freaking hide behind screens, abuse post hooks, abuse the intercept steal like you just see right here on that, abuse giant slayer and slithery finisher, and make six foot five, six foot six guards that can guard six ten, six eleven, seven foot centers, and it's just not realistic. No one on a consistent basis is gonna clamp them out at that height. Not even Draymond Green would be able to stop Shaq on a consistent basis it's not gonna happen so I just wanted to make this video I played these this exact game right here last night and it was just the boiling point for how I feel at this point there's I I get deep position but because this dude's a lockdown he just gets to stop me look my teammate makes a shot like that in the lockdowns face with his lockdown takeover but I can't make layups wide open and then he's doing wonky stuff like that he gets rewarded it's just that's all I had to say for you guys so please let me know how you guys feel and tell me if you guys are still enjoying this game because I can't tell you the last time I consistently enjoyed this game so peace out I'll catch you guys again later 
let me know how you guys are feeling during this quarantine. Uh, like, subscribe if you enjoy this content. I'll see you guys again soon. Peace out.